yes so i think uh, we can start now the lecture i hope my screen is visible to you and yeah, the ppt slides are visible to you and my voice is also audible i hope yes sir okay so in the last lecture we uh, you know talked about you know the latches and the registers okay and then we also saw how one can make mux based latches right so latches which have similar functionality similar to a multiplexer and then we also saw transmission gate based latches and also pass transistor based latches then we also saw a combination of combinational uh, sorry this is static cmos inverter and also uh, the transmission gate to you know make latches so for example uh, you know one of the latches are on your screen here so yeah so uh, this is uh, a mux based latch which is made from the transmission gate we have two transmission gates over here and three cmos inverters right and we said that uh, when you know the clock is uh, one so when clock is one this transmission gate is on and this is off so the data is uh, you know latched data comes here and comes at the output so d is copied to q when clock is one okay and when clock is zero so this d input which was latched in the previous clock cycle so that uh you know is saved in this loop because this transmission gate is also on now so the data stays in this loop so it is an example of it is an example of a static cmos where the data is stored in this feedback loop right so till the time you power this circuit give power to this circuit the data will be stored in this loop okay. now uh uh you know one can also think about uh you know implementing the same latch uh, using fewer elements so for example here uh, you know in this latch there are only two inverters and one transmission gate so this also works as a latch so when clock is high again in fact when cl clock is zero so this transmission gate is on so d input is latched over here b comes over here and then when clock is high so transmission gate switches off the previously latched data is now stored in this loop so again it's a static memory or static uh, storage element okay so the data is latched in this loop now now any change in d that is input so that will not affect the data which is stored here okay, okay. yeah so we discussed that this resembles a, a, an operation of a multiplexer so one can think of making a negative latch so that is transparent when clock is zero or maybe a positive latch when clock is one so for example here in this case this one so here uh, this transmission gate is on when uh, clock is zero so that means this is a negative latch so d input is sampled at the q output here this this may be called as a negative latch similarly this one so this may be a positive latch because data is sampled when this transmission gate is on this one is on and this is on when clock is uh, you know high right so the data can come here to the q output right? so this is transparent when clock is one so this may be termed as positive latch now in this mux based latch that we have seen using transmission gates and cmos inverters so the problem here is that the clock load is of four transistors i mean the clock is connected to the four transistors over here 1 2 3 and 4 so the clock load of four transistors uh, is present here so the number of uh, you know points where the clock is connected is four so that means clock power dissipation so that also depends upon uh, the number of connections uh, that has been provided to the clock i mean the points which are connecting the clock if those points are more then clock power dissipation can also be uh, more right so the, one of the goal is to now reduce the clock load of transistors okay. so that clock load can be reduced by you know further modifying this circuit the same latch further modification so now instead of transmission gate we are using pass transistors here right so this is one pass transistor and this 
This is the second one. Okay. Now instead of transmission gates, now you are using pass transistors. So here you will find that uh, the clock load is of only two transistors. Right? Earlier the clock load was four transistors. Here clock is connected to the gate of only two transistors. So the clock load is only of two transistors. But yes, there here uh, one problem would exist. That is, uh, we understand that uh, you know the pass transistors can only pass. VDD minus VTN. They cannot cannot pass good VDD. So if I try to buy, pass a one from you know D input data, so here at this point I can at most get maximum I can get is VDD minus VTN. Okay. So this is a huge problem here while using this pass transistor based latches, and because of this noise margin of this circuit will also be uh, you know somewhat low. Right. Now the other problem you will find over here is that uh, suppose these two transistors i mean the, since this requires a non overlapping clock so i re require a clock here and i inverted clock here okay? so that these two transistors are never on simultaneously i mean these are mutually exclusive transistors if this one is on this one will not on if this is on this should not be on right so that can only happen if the clock is non overlapping Right. So this is actually a requirement. The clock should be non-overlapping. Otherwise, this D input will always write, try to write the data at this point. Yeah, we don't want that to happen. We want in one half of the clock cycle, the data should come at this point, and in the other half of the clock cycle, this should be off so that no new data can come in. The previous old data can be retained in this loop because now this transistor is on. Right. So that can only happen if I have a non-overlapping clock of this kind. Right. So this is a non-overlapping clock, so it does not overlap. That is high level and low levels, clock and clock bars. So they, those are completely separate. Right. So they do not overlap. So this is one of the requirements here. Okay. Yeah. So this is one uh, one of the requirements of this circuit. So if they overlap, so then there is a problem. So you will uh, admit here that if they overlap, that is. Clock and clock bar, they have same value. That means, right? so if they overlap, so that means clock and clock bar both are high. If clock is high, so clock bar is also high. So that would mean that these two transistors will be on. Okay? So that means that D is directly connected to Q. Right? It does not wait for the next cycle. I mean, it is. I mean, both this network is also on, the loop is also on, and D input is also sub being supplied from, uh, you know, this pass transistor. So both this loop and this transistor. Both are trying to write data at the output. So some sort of race conditions exist here. That is, both uh, you know the loop and this MOS transistor are trying to write the data at the output. So race conditions can exist if the clocks are overlapping. So utilizing uh, these latches, multiplexer-based latches, one can also think of uh, implementing a register. Okay. Now a master-slave combination of uh, you know uh, these latches to implement a register is very common and very popular uh, thing so for example here also uh, you know a master slave i mean two stages are there one is master and one is slave so using master and slave combinations one can implement a register so uh, you know again in one half of the clock cycle you know either master will work or slave will work so for example here uh, when clock is zero, right? So when clock is zero, D input will be sampled and D comes over here and now the D is available at QM, right? So when clock is zero, D is sampled. So this is sampling the data. So when clock is zero, master is sampling the data and slave is in the hold mode, right? So this is sampling the data and this is in hold mode, slave, when clock is zero. So that means my D input that is now appearing here at this point. Okay. Now when clock is one, so this now is in hold state. That is master one is now in hold state. That is it retains the previous data that is D input which was sampled in the previous clock cycle in this loop, yeah, feedback loop. And now this one uh, slave one slave uh, latch. So this comes into sampling mode. So if clock is now one here. So whatever was present at this point, that is QM. So that can be sampled now to the output Q. Okay. And then when again uh, clock goes zero, 
so this comes into sampling mode and this now is in the hold mode that is it holds the or retains the value of q which was sampled in the previous clock cycle right so this can be seen here also uh, in this picture so when the clock goes zero here d is sampled to q okay and when clock is one here uh the qm is copied to qm value is copied to q okay. and this is also uh, you know uh, uh, giving a positive edge triggered register effect right that is the data q is available on the positive edge of the clock right so this one is sampling at the negative edge and this is sampling at the positive edge so overall d is available at the q output when the clock makes a, a positive transition that is from 0 to 1 so it could be termed as a positive edge triggered register now one can also think of making a master slave register using transmission gate and cmos inverter based latch so this latch we had studied so i'll show you once again so we had studied this latch so this is the same latch this one Okay. so using this latch one can also implement a master slave uh, a combination of register so where this this part will work as master and this one will work as slave okay. so let me remove this yeah so this part so this will work as master and this will work as a slave so now when uh, you know clock is uh, let us say zero right so when clock is zero so i have a one over here that means so that means my transmission gate number 1 is on right so when clock is zero i got one over here so transmission gate 1 is on so i'll write it here this is on transmission gate 2 is off okay and then transmission gate number 3 is also off so this is also off right so uh, when clock is zero so master uh, you know uh, latches in the sampling mode that is data d will be sampled in so when clock is zero this transistor this transmission gate is on so data comes in from here via this inverter one and it comes to this point and to this point okay and then it comes to i3 also and then it also comes to i2 and then it comes to this point here okay but since t2 is off okay so the data cannot you know move in this loop right so in the sampling mode my t2 is off so the data can come up to this point okay. now when clock is 1 okay so when clock is 1 my t1 will be off okay and t2 will be on so transmission gate 1 is off and t2 is on so now when t2 is on so whatever data was present here so that is now stored in this loop okay. and the same data is now applied to t3 because now t3 will be on okay when clock is 1 so when clock is 1 my t3 will be on so that means this slave is now is in sampling mode so it will sample the data which was present present here okay so this data is sampled now and it comes here at the output okay here so it can come here at the output again when clock makes a transition it goes to zero so this t3 will be off and t4 will be on and then the data can you know this slave can retain its old state that is the data will be now in this loop okay. now if somebody asked me to find out the delay uh, not the delay uh, setup time of this circuit right so somebody asked me to find out the setup time of this circuit in fact somebody asked me to find out the uh, total uh, clock period required that is this clock frequency maximum clock frequency or minimum clock frequency required to make this circuit function correctly right so somebody wants to find out the total clock frequency so we understood some time back that uh, the clock frequency now depends upon the setup time plus the propagation delay of the combinational logic elements okay uh yeah so these two things we need to find out that is clock to queue delay and also the setup time so setup time if i try to find out setup time is the time for which this d input that is data should be stable before the clock edge comes in okay. so that is before the data can be sampled the data has to be constant or stable for some time 
so that is set up time right so the data uh, you know when comes uh, you know it comes via this way that is it comes from i1 okay it goes to t1 and then it goes to i3 okay and then it goes to i2 here right so this is during the sampling part because i t2 is off so sampling part requires the data to travel from i1 via t1 to i3 and to i2 okay so that data at this point and this point both are same okay so that means setup time would be equal to the delay of this inverter number 1 plus delay of transmission gate 1 plus delay of i3 plus delay of i2 right so setup time that is time required for data to be stable before the you know uh, the clock transitions the clock transition happens right so that is uh, when you know the, uh, the total time taken by this element i1 plus t1 plus i3 plus i2 okay. so setup time let us say that the uh, delay of all these inverters that is i1 i2 i3 all are same and let us say that is given by tpd inverter right so if i say tpd invert inv so that is the delay of all inverters yeah all in inverters have same delay and that is equal to tpd inverter so that means total delay of these three inverters will be equal to 3 times this tpd okay and plus we have one transmission gate also in the way so let's say that transmission gate delay is given by tpd tx that is this value so the total setup time would be given by uh, 3 times the delay of inverter plus the delay of this transmission gate one so that is the total setup time now if somebody ask me to find out what will be the clock to queue delay okay that is when the uh, rising edge of the clock comes in and then after what time the output is present right because this is a positive edge triggered uh, you know register that is the data queue that is d that is this is available at queue when the positive edge comes in yeah that is when clock is 1 so we said that when clock is 1 then only d is transferred to queue so queue is getting a value of d only when clock is 1 so it's a positive edge triggered system right so clock to queue delay if i want to find out so in clock to queue delay that is when positive edge comes in so the data was already here at this point okay or maybe at this point yeah it, at this point it was present also at this point so this point the data was already present now when the positive edge of the clock comes in that is this slave when comes into action that is when this slave is sampling the data from qm so i4 it go, it has to go through i4 t3 and then it has to uh, go through i6 also right this one i6 so the data has to go from i4 t3 and i6 in fact i6 also it is present at i6 also right because if it is present at i3 so that automatically means it is also present at i4 uh, at the output i4 so that means the data has to go only from t3 to i6 okay during uh, the time when the slave is sampling the data okay so that means clock to queue delay will be equal to the delay of this transmission gate plus the delay of this cmos inverter right so that is being uh, you know given here that is clock to queue delay will be equal to the delay of this transmission gate t3 plus delay of this cmos inverter right and hold time somebody asked me to find out what will be the hold time so hold time is the time for which the data should be held stable after the clock has arrived right that is after this uh positive edge has arrived that is this clock has become one after this has arrived so the data has to be held stable so that delay actually will be zero and yeah, that is whole time will be zero here so why it will be zero so it will be zero because when clock becomes one then this transmission gate switches off okay. so that is the data cannot you know enter uh, uh you know into this system the entire system so there is no you know meaning of holding the data stable right because we don't want data in fact to come inside pass through this t1 so data is already stored here in this loop same data is now traversed 
uh, transfer to this queue right so we don't want this transmission gate to on so the whole time requirement is zero for this circuit so similarly one can find out the setup time hold time and clock to queue delay for any circuit not just this circuit and then one can find out the minimum clock frequency that is that will be equal to setup time plus clock to queue delay for this circuit yeah so a simulation can also be performed for the same circuit so in the simulation you will find that uh, this is my data and this is clock and this is queue output so clock to queue delay is uh, you know the delay when my clock is clock has reached 50% that is this point and my queue output that has also reached 50% right so this is tplh or clock to queue delay when queue rises from low to high so that is this much delay so this is my tplh or clock to queue in low to high transition similarly clock to queue in high to low transition so that will be equal to this much so the total propagation delay of this circuit can also be found by you know adding these two and uh, then taking the average of these two divided by 2 Yeah. So apart from that, transmission gate base. Hello. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Please, please ask. Sir, today is short, so I am. I will be absent. Too. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. No issues. Okay. Uh, now, apart from that, transmission gate based uh, register, one can also think of uh, having. a reduced clock load based uh, you know register and again one can think of uh, implementing a master slave register based on the same concept that is now this circuit that is this is a latch here and this is also a latch and now this will act as a master and this is act as a this will act as a slave right so both of them will operate during uh, a different clock cycles so for example when clock is uh, zero right so when clock is zero so this master will work that is sample and this will be in the whole state similarly when clock is one the slave will sample the data which is present here at this point and master will uh, you know be in the whole state that is this t1 that is transmission gate will be off and that the data which was already sampled so that will be moving in this loop right uh, but then there is a problem here in this circuit and that problem is again that this circuit is ratioed first of all you will notice here that this cmos inverter is smaller than this cmos inverter and uh, in the previous lecture we had uh, known that uh, you know uh, this cmos inverter also tries to write the data at this point and if this transmission gate is on so this also tries to write the data at this point right so uh, to uh, you know prevent this situation we said that this cmos inverter has to be weaker than this transmission gate so otherwise if it is not weaker than this transmission gate this transmission gate will never sample the data new data so this has to be weaker than this transmission gate now the other problem apart from this would be that uh, you know reverse or reverse transmission or uh, back transmission is also possible so for example you know the data from this okay, maybe let us say that uh, now the slave that is this mosfet this mosfet is now in sampling mode let us say okay, and this is in hold mode this one is in hold mode right so this is in hold mode so that means data supply is cut t1 is off so the data is the data which was sampled is moving in this loop right in the hold mode okay. now in the hold mode you will find that because of this loop and this cmos inverter can you know write the data at this node that is it can try to change the data which is which is already sampled in this loop okay. this cmos inverter so reverse transmission is possible this cmos inverter can write the data via this transmission gate to this point right so to prevent this again one would say that uh, you know this has to be weaker than this transmission gate or maybe this has to be weaker than this uh, cmos inverter also right so that way it can be 
prevented so reverse conduction is possible in this now the other problem in this type of circuit not in this type of circuit in the past transistor based uh, resistor would be that is uh, you know one has to avoid clock overlap and this clock overlap can happen because of this clock skew so ultimately we understand that these clock signals have to be uh, you know carried by some wires or some interconnects and those wires or interconnects may have parasitics so so that clock and clock bar may not arrive at the same time right so if they do not arrive at the same time so obviously then that situation is called clock skew right that is then in that situation we have a non overlapping clock clock of this kind that is clock and clock bar in these shaded regions you will see that clock is overlapping right that is uh, this is high overlap okay this portion is high and this is also high so clock and clock bar both are high at the same time okay. similarly clock and clock bar both are high, you know low at the same time here right so both are possible that is 1 1 overlap is also possible and 0 0 overlap is also possible right so both both kind of overlap are possible here uh, now because of these overlaps you will find that these two transistors these two transistors will be on simultaneously right we don't want these to be on simultaneously these should be mutually exclusive that is if this is on they should not be on but yes because of this situation that is one one overlap or maybe when clock and clock bar are overlapping so both of these two transistors will be on so when both these two transistors will be on so both of them will try to write the data on this and also these two transistors both of these two transistors will also be on so in this situation all four uh, you know pass transistors are on so that means the data d is directly coupled to this output q okay and we don't want this we want the data to be coupled to q that is first the data should be sampled by master and while the master is sampling the slave should be in hold mode okay and then in the next clock cycle we want the slave to sample the data and master to be in the hold mode but in this situation you know both are sampling the data i mean d is directly connected to q so this is what we do not want okay so this is a problem here or what we call as race condition exists here okay so this is unwanted situation and to overcome this again a requirement is that we want a non overlapping clock so to have a non overlapping clock itself is a very big deal because as i said that these clocks signals have to be carried by some uh, you know wires and these wires because of their parasitics or maybe because of some noise these wires can produce delays and because of these delays you may see such situation that is clock skew where the clocks are uh, you know overlapping clock and clock bar signals uh now apart from uh, you know uh, these kinds of resistors and latches one can also think of uh, making you know uh, flip flops or by stable circuits that has two stable state that is zero or one by using crossed couple cross couple uh, logic circuits yeah? so for example here two uh, two input nor gates uh, they are cross coupled back gate cross coupled in fact this is very similar to the two cmos inverters that were earlier cross coupled like this we had seen right so this is same situation so instead of now two cross coupled inverters we have two cross coupled nor gates okay so nor gates now they are there are two input nor gates so that one can accommodate this s and r inputs also that is set and reset so when s is high that is you want to set the output q to 1 so when s is 1 the output q will be set to 1 right similarly when reset r so this is 1 so the output q will be uh, set to 0 right so reset means 0 So, so based on that, one can uh, you know find out uh, this kind of truth table for SR flip flop. Okay. So here you will see that when set is one, S is one, Q is one, okay. and when reset that is R is one, then 
the output q is set reset to zero now this condition that is when both set and reset are one so this is forbidden state so in this condition we do not know what will be the output q and q bar yeah so they are actually unknown so yeah so uh, you know using this one can implement a flip flop in fact in a flip flop or in a bistable circuit of circuit of this kind one can force the output state from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 via these feedback loops okay so these feedback loops are in fact a necessary condition to force the output from 0 to 1 let's say the q input the you know the q was 0 yeah, earlier when q was 0 i want to make uh, a transition of on q from 0 to 1 okay so for this i'll make set input high okay so if set input is high then uh, you know either it is 0 or 1 doesn't matter so you have 0 here okay 1 plus 0 1 and then you have a 0 over here so this 0 is applied to this so when set is 1 so obviously reset should not also be 1 otherwise it will become a indeterminate or forbidden state that is this one so reset is zero and this is also zero so this becomes one obviously right so this feedback loop is actually very important and uh, you know a necessary condition to you know uh, reset or to force the data on the output that is you want to switch the data from zero to one or one to zero you need a feedback from the output to the input of this kind and this is a nor based set reset flip flop so one can also think of making a nand a cross coupled nand based sr flip flop okay so that is also possible by connecting simply two nand gates okay like this in fact as i said that uh, this is simply a inverter uh, connected uh, back to back like this okay so instead of inverter now you are connecting a nand gate so now the cmos equivalent of this circuit that is sr flip flop so as i said that you have two cmos inverters so let us say that we have two cmos inverters here uh, which are actually uh, presented here by m1 and m2 so this makes my one inverter okay and m4 and m3 so this is my another inverter so these two inverters are connected back to back like this okay so cross coupled inverters and then you also have two more transistors connected to q bar okay so that means let us say if this is my q bar here and this is my q so i have two more tra transistors at q bar one is connected to clock the gate is connected to clock and the other's gate is connected to uh, set s input i have here i have a clock clock here and this is set similarly at q i have two more transistors and one of the transistors gate is connected to again clock and the other one is connected to reset that is r input okay right so this circuit can be arrived at by looking at this picture okay. now again here if somebody wants to switch the output q from 0 to 1 right maybe let me rub everything let me remove everything so if i want to uh, switch the output uh from 0 to 1 let us say initially the output was 0 and now i want the output to go from 0 to 1 okay. so for this i need to uh what i need here is uh this is 0 here so earlier it was 1 here so i need a 0 now okay. so that means my q bar should be 0 right so i need a 0 here to make a one change over here Right. so i need a zero here to have to make a one change over here so this zero that is this gates in input is connected to here output so that means q bar should be zero at that moment so if i want a one over here so i want q bar to be zero now bringing q bar to zero so that is a, a main challenge right so now this problem uh, you know becomes a ratioed problem this circuit becomes a ratioed circuit where one has to adjust the sizes of these transistors that is m5 m6 and m7 and m8 m8 so that this q bar is uh, at least below the switching threshold of this cmos inverter 
that is low level of this q bar low level of this cmos inverter okay low level of this cmos inverter which is made from m1 and m2 so that has to be uh, smaller than the switching threshold of this okay so i'll write here that is q bar low that is low value of this q bar that should be less than the switching threshold of vm of this transistor that is which is made from m4 and m3 okay so this is the necessary condition so for achieving this condition one has to size these transistors m5 and m6 okay one has to find out the size of m5 and m6 okay now when uh, uh, you know yeah so when uh, you know this would be zero only when you apply a one over here or maybe let's say earlier it was uh, q was uh, you know zero so q bar was one so for q bar to be one i need a zero over here so for this condition that is when i am having at the input zero my this m2 is on m6 and m5 so these three transistors are on that is m1 is on off now right so m1 is off so now one can think of uh having a inverter using this pmos and these two nmoses right so now this circuit actually translates when m1 is off so this circuit translates into a inverter again so now the inverter is formed by using m2 and two nmoses that is m6 and m5 combination of m6 and m5 so this m6 and m5 they you know combinedly act as one nmos and this m2 acts as a pmos so i have a inverter here now right using m5 m6 and m2 okay now to find out the size of m5 and m6 okay so in this situation when all these three transistors are on so we assume that these three transistors are in saturation okay now in saturation you you need to write the equation that is drain current in saturation from for m2 and that you have to equate to the drain current in saturation for for m6 and m5 now for m6 and m5 to be used as one transistor what we do here we we say that there is a transistor here which acts as a combination of m6 and m5 now the l of this transistor so that is equal to two times the l of m5 and m6 okay so that way one can uh, substitute one transistor in place of these two transistors right that is m5 and m6 can be substituted by one transistor which has a channel length double the length of these two transistors so if m5 and m6 have a channel length of let's say 0.5 micron so this equivalent one transistor that is nmos will have a channel length of uh, uh, 2 into 0.5 that is 1 micron okay. so now you write uh, the uh, saturation uh, current equation for this nmos which has a channel length of 2l right that is id of i'll write id of m5 and m6 and then equate them okay. and then uh, put uh, you know uh, th this point that is vd that you put i put as vm and let us say vdd is 2.5 volts so vm will be vdd by 2 right so put q bar that is vds is vdd by 2 in this equation okay. and then find out the ratio of you know uh, w w by l of this mosfet okay. w by l of this mosfet is known to us i mean m2 m4 m1 m3 all are known to us w by l of this is known this is known m1 is also known and m3 is also known okay. now to you know change the state from 0 to 1 as i said since this becomes a ratio problem so you have to change the value of these two circuits these two sorry transistors so that the low level of this q bar so that can be brought is smaller than vm of this cmos inverter that is which is made from m4 and m3 then only the output can be switched from 0 to 1 otherwise it cannot be so this becomes a ratio problem so that is how you will find the w uh, you know ratios of width and l for m5 and m6 transistors yeah so simulation can also be done to find out the dependence of w by l of 5 and 6 on this q bar right so we want q bar to be zero 
then only q will become 1 right that is we want to force the output q from 0 to 1 we'll have to change w by l ratio so here it is evident that unless you increase w by l uh, beyond 3 right w by l of 5 and 6 that should be greater than 3 micron right so below 3 micron you cannot bring q bar to 0 right so about 3 you can think of making this q bar to 0 then only q can be uh, you know uh, brought to 1 or high now uh, so far we have only talked about static latches so in the static latches we store the data in some sort of feedback loop so this is this is the feedback loop where we were storing the data and we concluded that till the power is supplied to this circuit the data will be stored in this loop right you remove the power the data is lost now apart from static <coughs> memories uh, one can also think of dynamic or charge based memory okay so for example this circuit here okay so this represents a dynamic edge triggered resistor okay so this also represents a resistor here so where this is stage is master okay and the rest of the stage is slave so this is master and this is rest of the stage is slave okay now the only difference you will see from static memory is that you do not have any feedback loop okay you do not have any loop instead the data is stored on these capacitances right which are present at node number 1 and node number 2 okay. so the d input which is sampled by master so that will be stored on node number 1 on capacitor and this capacitor obviously needs refreshing at regular intervals by some clock signal okay. yeah so the data is sampled and stored on this capacitor now this capacitor has a contribution from the gate capacitance of this cmos inverter and the drain diffusion capacitance of pmos and nmos and also the overlap capacitance of the pmos and nmos of this transmission gate right so this capacitance has that much contribution from i1 also and t1 also similarly c2 has a contribution from i3's gate capacitance and the drain diffusion capacitance and also the overlap capacitance that is gate to drain overlap capacitance of pmos and nmos of transmission to transmission gate to right now in the uh, you know when clock is 1 uh, okay, so this is a negative edge triggered uh, resistor so d will be sampled to q that is d will appear at q when clock becomes clock makes a transition from high to low the clock becomes zero when, right so when clock is 0 uh, this transmission gate is on so d is sampled and d comes over here okay and when the clock is 1 uh, so this transmission gate is off this is on so the d input which was stored here so this becomes here d bar okay and then d bar is stored on this uh, node number 2 and here at this point you can find d right so that is uh, now the slave is sampling the data from node number 1 to node number 2 right so that happens when clock is 1 that is this transmission gate is Ah, okay. Now, if somebody asks me to find out now again the setup time of this circuit, right? So, if somebody asks me to find out the setup time of this circuit, that is, setup time is the time for which the D input has to be stable before the clock edge comes in. Okay. So, the setup time in this case will be, I mean, you know, the data comes from this point here and it. settles over here that is it is stored at this point so that means obviously setup time will require the delay of this transmission gate one only right so setup time that is time for which the data d should be stable before the clock edge comes in that is the negative edge clock comes in because at negative this is sampling the data right so that date time is only when you know d crosses t1 so that is it includes only the delay of t1 not the delay of i1 because the data is stored here if the data was stored here then we would have 
included the delay of I1 also. So setup time includes only the delay of T1 and I1. Right? So I'll mark here setup time is simply the delay of T1, not T1 plus I1 because the data is stored at this point, not at this point. Okay. Now whole time, right? So whole time means the data has to be stable after the clock edge has come in. Okay. So here again, the whole time requirement is zero because data is already here present, uh, you know, uh, stored on this capacitor. So same data can be transferred to node number two. Okay. In the, when clock becomes one. Okay. So when clock becomes one, the data can easily be transferred from here to node one to node two. So you do not need a condition of whole time that is data uh, may change, no issues. Okay. So you do not need this condition on uh, uh, data to be stable after the arrival of uh, positive edge of the clock when this you know, circuit becomes functional. Okay. So that means whole time will be zero because your data is already existing here. Data needs not to be stable when clock edge, uh, you know, uh, clock becomes one. Right. So data we don't need data to be stable because data is already stored here. So whole time is that means zero. And also since T1 turns off on next clock edge, right? So this is stored here and T1 turns off, so whole time is zero. And further input changes are obviously ignored. Now T clock to Q delay. Okay. Somebody asked me what is will be the clock to Q delay of this circuit. Right? So the data is here at this point. Now the data has to, in the next clock cycle, data has to traverse this inverter plus this transmission gate and also this inverter so that the data comes over here and it is read here right if it was supposed to be read here then the total delay clock to q delay will be only equal to the delay of this i1 plus delay of t2 but if the data has to be read at this point q then the total clock to q delay will be i1 plus t2 plus i3 okay that is clock to q delay is equal to the delay of two inverters plus the delay of transmission gate number two here Now one can also think of making a dynamic latch pseudo static, right? So dynamic latch, we understood that in dynamic latch, the data is st stored on the capacitor, right? So one can mix this dynamic and static thing and one can, you know, uh, put a loop here that is feedback loop. Okay? So that the data is also stored on this capacitor and also in this feedback loop. So that is, you, you're making a dynamic latch pseudo static, not completely static, but yes, partially static you're trying to make. So this will obviously cost in delay, that is delay will be somewhat more. Yeah? And, but yes, the noise immunity will be higher compared to the, uh, you know, fully dynamic or fully charge based, uh, you know, resistor. Now apart Apart from this, one can also think of, uh, uh, you know, other latches. For example, this is C square MOS latch, right? So here, uh, you know, this circuit represents a master stage and this represents a slave stage. So when clock is, uh, uh, let us say when clock is zero, so clock is zero. So that means this transistor is on. So when clock is zero, this transistor is on, this is also on. Okay. And if you apply D as zero, so if you apply D as zero, so you get one here, that is D bar you get here at X. Okay. So that means you have sampled the data. Data is not equal to D, but inverted data you get it, get at this node. That is stored here. Now in the next clock cycle, when clock becomes, one. Okay. So when clock becomes one, now this becomes off okay. and this also becomes off. Right. So that means I don't have a path. I mean, this is now not connected to this inverter, CMOS inverter. That is CL1 is now not connected to this inverter. CL1 is now only connected to this inverter. Why? Because now this is on and this is also on when clock is one. This is when the clock is one. That is, we are in slave is in the uh, sampling mode. So the data which was stored here, that is D bar. So that will be passed to Q. And now we get finally D here. Yes. 
So one we had d bar is one, so d will become equal to zero. So that is we transferred zero, uh, uh, you know, sample was sampled by master, and now the same zero is appearing at the output of this layer here. Right. So that way also one can think about implementing, uh, you know, latches. And uh, the important thing you will notice here in this latch is that is C square MOS latch. The important thing you will notice here is that it is insensitive to clock overlaps. So, for example, you will see that zero zero overlap is shown over here. That is during this uh, time, so the both clock and clock bar are zero. Similarly, one one overlap that is during this time, both clocks, clock and clock bar both are high. So it is insensitive to clock overlap. How? So let us talk about zero zero overlap. That is when clock and clock bar both are zero. So when clock and clock bar both are zero, then this transistor which was appearing here, so this will be off. So only these will be working. Okay. This is off. Right. Uh, so uh, so so that means yeah. So zero zero overlap. So no issues. Uh, and also here, so that is D cannot be directly connected to Q now. So earlier we had seen in dynamic, uh, that is this one, we had seen that D can be directly connected to Q if I have a overlap of clock. That is clock and clock bar both are same. Then this transmission gate was also on and this was also on. So D was directly connected to Q. Okay, so that was uh, a race condition was happening here, right? So but here in this case C square MOS, I do not have a race condition. D is not connected to Q, okay? Because this MOS is missing now, and here this MOS is missing. So D input is only appearing at this point X in zero zero overlap. Similarly, in one one overlap, this MOS is missing. This is off, and this is off also. Okay? So again, now D input is isolated from Q output. Okay? So this is insensitive to uh, clock overlaps. But yes, other regions in, in these two regions, obviously. D input can be sampled by masters and slaves, okay. but zero zero and one one. Since because we don't have a transistor over here, these two are off and also these two are off. So D input is not connected to Q. So that problem is overcome. Maybe I think I'll stop here and uh, in the next lecture we will talk about uh, the pipelining issues. So if you have any questions, then maybe you can ask. Hello, sir. Yeah, please. Sir, in case of dynamic uh, charge storage, okay, uh, can we go on that? Uh, PD? Yes, sir. Next one. When the data is stored at the C1 and the T2 is off, then it it does not also appear at the I1 output. Yeah, it appears at output. It appears at I1 output. When T2 is on, then uh, why we require the time delay of I1? It doesn't need na. We have to go through only the T2 and I3. You see, there are two uh, delay of two inverters. Yeah, correct. So uh, it can be considered. Yeah, correct. It can be. So the data is also available here. So clock to queue delay can ignore the delay of this one. So yeah, correct. So the delay can be T2 and I3. Right. Yeah, that is okay. It can be. So obviously the data is present here. It is present here also, and it is present here also. Yeah, but this data is refreshed by some mechanism. But here it is not refreshed. Right. So if okay. you want to see stored data here, then this has to be refreshed. So let us say that we are assuming that data is stored here. So then it will include the delay of this. Otherwise, if I am storing it here, the delay of then T2 and I3 will only be there. Then setup time will include the delay of T1 and I1. Right. Okay. So the total delay will be same. Either you store it here or here. If you store it here, setup time will include the delay. This one. Okay. Sir. Okay. Sir. Store here, then clock to queue will take a delay from here. Yeah. Um, one more thing, sir. Actually, I have doubt. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah. Can we go to the SR uh, flip flop implementation where you show that by using the uh, two inverters and that? Uh, uh, SR flip flop. 
दिस वन नो सर मतलब जो आपने इंप्लीमेंट करके दिखाया था नो सर नॉट दिस वन यस सर दिस ओके सर एज द एस साइज इज सो मच स्मॉल दैट इट कैन नॉट मेक द क्यू बार 0 एंड 1 देन व्हाई वी यूज इट I didn't get that point actually. Uh, we With make size? them size of M5 and uh, we made such that it it cannot make the cow bar zero and one. Okay. Okay. Then why why we use this these sir actually? Uh, what is the benefit to use it actually? I didn't get that point. Benefit to use Maybe across I'm... couple time. Okay. What what are you saying, sir? Uh, you want to know why? What is the benefit of use? using cross coupled nand gates like this yes sir so the benefit is that uh, you know you can overpower or what we call as you can force the output to change its state otherwise it is difficult to change the states if you don't connect an output i mean you don't take a feedback from output and connect to the input of this gate then you cannot change the state of uh, you know the output so if the output has maintained a state so it will remain at a state at that that state if you don't connect a feedback from output to the input right so that is the actually benefit and this problem becomes obviously a ratio problem so one has to now carefully size these transistors that is m5 m6 and m7 m8 if they want to now force this q to make a transition from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 so these two transistors have to be sized size properly otherwise uh, the transition cannot be achieved that is if it is fixed at zero it will remain fixed at zero right yeah anything else excuse me sir yeah, please sir can you go to that storage mechanism slide uh storage mechanism dynamic and static yes sir this one sir uh, sir yes sir sir even in the static also we are having the capacitance due to the uh, transmission gates of the you know, diffusion capacitance uh, and yeah, also correct. we are having the inverter you know input capacitor uh, correct so here as i said that dynamic requires refreshing because these capacitors will obviously lose their charge because of you know conduction through that reverse biased end to bulk junction or maybe some other leakages are possible so these capacitors need refreshing right so here also it is stored stored obviously and we do not try to refresh these capacitances by any keeper mosfet or level restorers we don't use we simply supply the power and the you know uh, the data which is stored so that is you know stored in this loop till the power is supplied the data keeps on you know moving in this loop here it is not possible because capacitor will, will lose its charge after some time right so we need some sort of refreshing Via some clock input, right? regular intervals, you will need to refresh these capacitors. So here we don't need to refresh any node. We need to simply supply power supply. Yeah, anything else? So if we don't have anything, then uh, let us end the class and maybe. Excuse we'll... me, sir. Yeah, please. Excuse me, sir. Yes, please, 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 sir. Uh, mid exams uh, to uh, open book only, sir. Like same like mid one only. So when are the mid mid exams? Mid twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight. 